Hey, it's Joel, and you may remember this. This is a little Moai statue head thing, and it's two colors. It's uh, it's two different materials. One of the materials reacts with UV light, but I'm in Seattle, so you can't see that because we have no sun right now. I wanted to go bigger, but it failed. It failed on the Ultimaker 3, and I know why it failed, and I know what we need to do to fix it. So we're gonna talk about that right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Oh, you know, before I forget, I do remember, I have this UV flashlight and I believe the material within this little Moai head will react and it'll change color. But regardless of UV light and the city of Seattle's ability to receive sun, we need to talk about this and why it failed. And before we talk about this, we need to talk about something else. This, this is the Halloween model. And in fact, it failed. And here's why. I was running a version of Cura that wasn't up to date. It was 3.3.1, I think, and I think we're on 3.5, something like that. This is the model by Wexter, and it was dual color on the Ultimaker. It was using Vertigo Galaxy from Filamentum, and it was using the Protopasta Tangerine Orange. This is the prime tower that it created, and it also knocked over while it was printing. This had a bunch of extra stuff on it that I had to peel off. Prime towers in multicolor, multi-material printing are needed because when you have an inactive nozzle or when you have a color transition in a single nozzle, you have to either purge or prepare the nozzle for printing. It's like if uh, you have two nozzles, one's going around printing, the other one is not. Before that other one prints, because you need accuracy, it needs a place to purge and prepare itself before it starts to print. And that's why we have purge towers and purge blocks and those sort of things. In the Ultimaker Cura, the default in 3.3.1 was this prime tower. It creates layers of each of the colors in this circular fashion, the size of probably like a US dime, nickel, between a nickel and a dime. And it's hollow. Like I can see you through it. So what this means is depending on the height of your model, you are relying on two <laughs> very thin walls of plastic sticking to the build plate in a corner going as high as it can. You'll see that the prime tower includes these little bits of nozzle remnants right here. And that's because, you know, filament oozes out and it gets caught by the prime tower, which is great. But filament, when it's warm, it's oozy. And when it starts to cool, it can cool up or down. That's why we have curling in some models. And when these bits curl up or into the path of an incoming nozzle, and this is right here, and the head comes over, goes jigger, 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 and it hits one of those. And it acts as a pendulum and it just goes bonk and it knocks it over. And when you have very little filament holding it to the build plate, that's a problem. Also on build plates, there is such a thing as cold corners or non-regular heat in the corners because the, it's just a thing. It could mean that adhesion itself in the corner of the build plate isn't as good as other places. Some suggestions are, well, why don't you upgrade Cura? Okay, I'll upgrade Cura. This was printed with the new version of Cura, 3.5.1, something like that. They did make some changes. Look at that, it's no longer hollow. It is a solid dime nickel shaped circular pattern that sits on the build plate. That's great, but you still have these crazy little remnants of filament hanging on to the outside. One color goes on the inside, one color goes on the outside. That was a change as well. But these little remnants, they can cool upwards, which means that as the printer is printing, jigger, 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 and it, it'll knock it over still. Yes, there's more material at the bottom, which enables the prime tower to stick better. However, we're talking with something that's probably mission critical to your print succeeding. And by default, Cura doesn't care. So let's say the prime tower does fall over. Let's say your print is something that you can't stop and you've invested time, money, energy, filament into it. And it's just something that where you're like, well, let's cross our fingers. Let's hope it succeeds. This is what happens. You get this. This is what I'm affectionately calling the Harry Moai. And it wasn't on purpose. Here's the purge tower and it's sat 
right back here. The purge tower itself did the thing it needed to do until it got knocked over. Since the printer itself is expecting a purge tower to be there, it needs to deposit filament down. You can't stop that from happening, but it's going to be depositing filament in thin air, right in the middle of nowhere with nothing to put it on. And then the nozzle and the head are gonna move back to the model to print. That means that you're gonna end up with all of this stuff just hanging off of the model. Sometimes that can cause the model to fail because it can get in the way of the extruder and the head and the nozzle. It can actually embed itself in the model in certain places so colors will be mixed up. It can get jammed into the, the heater carriage of the, the nozzle. It can, all sorts of bad things can happen. And in order for me to make sure this completed all the way, I had to babysit the print the last 10 minutes of it because there was so little space up here and it wasn't able to to catch the filament all the time and i sat at the printer for five minutes and watched it fail in fact you may even be seeing that on the time lapse so i think what we should do is remove it from the build plate and see if this is still salvageable i used magic goo magic goo on glass means that it holds really tight and then when the glass is cold it just pops off honest to goodness i hadn't removed it before and I was just keeping my fingers crossed that Magic Goo was still working and you saw me remove it. So yay Magic Goo. Dirty, look at all this stuff. Let's just get it over there. To salvage this, it's first we need to manually take off as much as we can. Remember, these are just filament remnants that are slightly tacked onto the side of the model as the filament is a bit warm-ish, right, coming right off the nozzle. So it's not like it's truly melted together, but it's still warm enough to where it attaches. And that's, well, I don't know. Let's see if we can get away without having to sand it. But that's not bad. This is, this is not bad. I have an idea. Let me get my handy, can, handy dandy Evan and Caitlin knife and just kinda, I could run some sandpaper, some 220. Just a off. I know I could use water, but I've got some isopropyl alcohol handy here. And I think I can just clean up the model and get that sanded filament dust. Well, there we go. We have a, a print and we seem to have saved it from its hairy impending doom. But now let's look to the future. What if this happens to you? Well, you know what to do to the model if the prime tower falls over and you know what could happen to it, but what's a way to keep your prime tower from falling over? There's a couple things I think you should know about. One of the things you can do in your slicer to ensure that your prime tower doesn't fall over is to give it a brim. Unfortunately, this means that your model also has a brim and you may not want a brim for your model. So while this does work, it's not optimal for, for, for what you need, most likely. You can change the shape of your prime tower. Cura allows you to have it be non-circular, or in this case, a square but because it's still occupying roughly the same amount of space in, in roughly the same area, then its chances of survival are about the same as your circular prime tower. There are settings within Cura that allow you to give more filament to your prime tower or make sure more, more filament is extruded. It seems like Cura is missing something. It's missing a proper default. The default behavior within Cura is a circular prime tower in the back of the build plate, and that's about it. I think that Cura should add something to the settings that allows you to give your prime tower a brim and then configure the size of the brim for the prime tower. If your prime tower is right here and the nozzle has a chance of knocking it over, a 10 perimeter brim is certainly going to ensure that there's a wider base stuck to the build plate, which means it has a greater chance of surviving a nozzle hit. That's a good thing. Other slicers, of course, have more configurable prime towers and priming blocks and things of that nature. With the Ultimaker 3, though, I'm using Ultimaker Cura. It communicates with it, it talks with it. It seems to provide the best user experience. However, there is functionality missing, and I think Cura in an update 
should add it. Thanks for coming along on this little journey. I'm glad we got this printed and I'm glad I talked about the problems I had, how I mitigated them, but how you can also mitigate them and hopefully Cura can solve them in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not and to ring that bell to be notified of when really fun stuff is uploaded. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys, as always. High five.